we don't have a ton of time this morning, why don't we start? Sure. And, uh, Heidi and Mark can join us in progress. Um, so uh, the Senate has sent us back H63 with um, some meaningful changes on it, some of which I think we've had a chance to chew on previously. Um, I've invited uh, Luke to essentially walk through the bill. Um, Luke, from my perspective, although I welcome input from others, um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're welcome to kind of gloss over some of the some of the sections that we've been through before. Um, we don't have to go through the bottle sections, uh, but um, as I said, I think there are four or five sections that have been added since we've last seen it, so it would be helpful if you went through those. Good morning, everyone. Luke Moore, Land Director of Legislative Council. I'm here at age 63, Senate Proposal of Amendment. And I'll take the chair's cue and I'll move pretty quickly because I think there's other folks who may want to be heard and I think they're on the floor at 10. So please stop me if anything I say is unclear or you need more info. What I'll try to do is highlight the changes from the last time I came in and did a walkthrough of the language that the Senate was considering. So you had a Senate natural version, then it went to Senate finance, who had their own version, which is the one I discussed last time. Senator Probst then had the bill and made some changes. There was a further amendment on the floor, which was then verbally amended, and then there was a subsequent written amendment to that amendment on the floor that had been verbally amended. So all those pieces coming together, they're not yet posted on the webpage for H63, because they haven't all been put together yet by the Senate Secretary. I'm going off what's in your calendar, which I believe is accurate. So I think things were put together correctly. Um, there are some cross-references and other things that are now erroneous because of all these changes that were happening, but I don't think they're legally substantive. So I'll try to highlight those in the work group. The first is section that, we Is that on our uh, work page yet? It's on so your calendar. On calendar. So I'm working off the calendar, okay. your calendar, the house calendar for today. Oh, the house calendar. Yes. Oh, okay. On oh, H63 oh, webpage, as I said, oh, there's oh, not a new version posted because that hasn't been done yet. But I think this is accurate. I think the Senate Secretary did a good job of collating all those various amendments. First section, um, Efficiency Vermont, ability to use funds. We talked about it last time I was here. I don't think there's any substantive legal changes to this. Do you guys have any questions about this? I described this last time I was here. I think you've heard other testimony. Yeah. All right. Section two, PUC proceeding. We also discussed last time. Um, there was a reorganization of the factors under the page I have up now. You'll see C as in Charlie, small one, small two. We're a little higher up on the page under the factors that the PUC would consider. It was reorganized to make it flow a little better. A substantive legal change. I don't think there's any other substantive legal changes to this section. So it's largely intact and largely asking the PUC to do the same things that we walked through last time I was in your committee. But this is longer and denser than section one. Are there any questions about section two or what the PUC is being asked to consider? And this, once again, was the all fuels the expanded definition or concept of efficiency, and how to pay for those, and also language about process and reports. The other change I would highlight is in the report section, which is D. You'll see under one, those last two lines, some of that language was added, and, and simply the uh, reason it was added is that um, Efficient Vermont does a planning process every few years, the demand uh, resources plan proceeding, which syncs with this same PUC proceeding time frame. So this language was added just to make sure that when the PUC comes back with its first report in 2020, its preliminary report, if there's anything that they're consider considering or things that they would be recommending in their final report the next year that might impact that plan proceeding, they should discuss those things let you know and let efficiency remind them. Proceeding. Uh, the renaming of the existing energy committee and its change mandate, I also went through that. So I won't repeat that. I don't think there's any substantive changes from what I walked uh, walk through last time. I just would highlight under 
what is now 603, the duties. You'll see what's underlined. That's the same language we looked at last time. I just want to make clear that everyone understands that this renamed committee would function when the General Assembly is not in session. And this would be its jurisdiction or mandate, those lines that are underlined. Any questions about that? Be light. Uh, I think, I, in fact, I know I walked through this last time. I don't think there's any substantive changes. A lot of these that I'm paging through right now are the findings. But, yes, sir. Can I see the wording again on be like as far as <coughs> so, uh, so section four just provides a mechanism that if be like decides okay, yeah. to contribute money towards weatherization, <coughs> that allows that money to flow into the fund. There's not a mandate then, right? In yes, and now section five is is a lot of findings, and then D, um, I'm sorry, B is what really matters, and it simply says that the General Assembly finds that be like investing the dividends from Velco, which I mentioned last time, uh, is consistent with their mission and furthers their goals, and then it's basically a request. As a result, the General Assembly encourages be like to invest the dividends of its Velco stocks in the weatherization assistance fund. Okay. So it is not, you cannot mandate, and it is not a mandate. It is an encouragement. Any questions about that? Section 6, 350K, general fund to Pitches in Vermont for further weatherization programs and services. In the same way that the carry forward and the other funds are set forth that, that Pitches in Vermont will use in section one. So it's giving them an additional one-time appropriation for the same programs and services. Any questions about that? Section seven is new. Um, and this is amending the acts and resolve. So this was language you did not see last time. There is currently in the 2018 acts and resolves in session law, a mechanism for the treasurer's office to, and I'm sorry it's not all on the same page, but you see B is the most important section in fiscal years 2019 and 2020 for the treasurer to invest up to $5 million um, via a credit facility for an accelerated weatherization and housing improvement program. And then in current law under one and two, there is various restrictions or guideposts into how that money would be used. What you'll see as it changes is first of all, this is extended to 2021, same five million, and those guidelines are narrowed down. Uh, it's made much more open to how the money could be used. So if this is adopted, what it would say is under one, the fund shall be used to support weatherization efforts and housing improvement efforts for, that's current law, the new law, owner-occupied homes and multi-family homes. And going down to what used to be three and now it'd be two, weatherization efforts are included in the improvements and housing unit funded from the credit facility. And background, based on testimony uh, in the other committees, was that the treasurer has access to this $5 million pool um, there haven't been many takers. I think there's one entity that applied for a multi-million dollar uh, program, but it's subsequently reduced to 500K. So 5 million available, 500K has gone out the door. This is meant to free up the ability of the treasurer to move more money out the door during the next couple of fiscal years. Yes? Go ahead. Uh, with regard to multifamily homes, what, is, what does that mean? It means uh, uh, in terms of, is it, um, renters are able to access these? It's not so limited in this language. It's not what? It's so limited in this language. So it would, I assume. But it is allowed well, for renters. Let me finish. I, I, I think the mechanism would be that the uh, either a not-for-profit that may be trying to <coughs> disperse funds might apply for access to uh, these funds. Or maybe the owner of the structure could apply. I don't know if renters individually could apply. I assume it would be the owner of the building, multifamily building, could apply for access to this funding. But this would be a program run by the treasurer's office and, and, and you know, in conjunction with the credit facility, which I think is best cute, <coughs> so that they work out the details. So let me put this back to you. Sure. My presumption <coughs> is that how this program works is with this $5 million credit facility will work with uh, 
uh, nonprofits around the state. Actually, I don't want that to be a nonprofit, um, but organizations around the state that would lend money um, for weatherization efforts. So it's not the treasurer's office that is necessarily making um, the, the decisions with a prospective borrower. I, I think you're correct. I don't think they're directly lending the money to an individual borrower. I think you're correct. But that's something that maybe you should hear testimony on if that's an issue of importance to this committee because I only know in general terms. Okay. And, and these are loans, correct? I, once again, that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Yes? The treasurer's okay. office. You should hear from the treasurer's <coughs> office or <coughs> other individuals to get more involved. So. Any other questions about this section? <coughs> now we're into the beverage sections, which I'll page through it very quickly. I don't think this committee has questions about that. Now, jumping to section 11, this and the subsequent sections was language that uh, largely was originally in the Senate natural version of this bill, was taken out by following committees, and then on the floor amendment was made to add it back in. So at some point you might have read this, or there might have been discussion. This first section 11 is findings. So this will go in session law. Um, because of all the moving pieces, some of those findings don't exactly mesh with other sections of the bill, but they're just findings. They have little or no legal impact. So I haven't seen this, so if we could go through it briefly. Sure. Instead of me reading, because I either try to start reading very fast and it wouldn't be clear. I could um, read it. You want to just read it on the screen? I can certainly answer any questions. These are very general findings about climate okay, goals so and then uh, the state's ability to meet them. Once again, this goes in session law and has little or no legal impact. It's setting the stage for some of the other sections. perhaps, but it doesn't really no. sync with some of the other sections because it's been changed so many times. So I don't think that's a legal problem yeah. if you decide not to concur, which of course is <coughs> to you, and you're doing a further proposal of amendment or a committee conference, we can clean that up. Yeah. Moving on to section 12, building energy labeling and benchmarking. I think the sponsor of this, these sections are here, so <coughs> perhaps you can hear from him for policy rationale. But Section 61 is definitions. And I don't know if you reviewed the Senate natural version of this bill, but this language is all in there. These definitions are all in there. And what really matters is then Section 62 and Section 63. So Section 62 establishes two working groups, one for residential. And I won't go in read through this language because of time constraints. And one for commercial, which is B. And they have the members of those various groups, and there's actually similarity in the membership. And then their mission, which uh, most of which is under F, is to provide the commissioner on this information, one, two, three, four, and five. And just so you know, these working groups, although they're the bill was written as they're in um, codified law. They're time limited, and so they would expire or sunset in a few years. They would cease to exist. 63, I think I walked through before, but I forget which committee I did which presentation for. And this is, no, is aggregated data. So this is for multi-unit buildings, and it allows the owner or manager of those buildings to request certain data as to energy usage, but there is an opt-out provision that if you are a tenant of that building, in other words, you're renting those apartments, you can opt out of this data collection. And so this under one is the mechanism for the, let's say the owner of the building, to request that this data be obtained and how to do that. And I would strongly suggest you hear from the sponsor of this as to 
the policy reasons behind this and how he envisions it would function. Do you have a question, Heidi? I'm sorry. Would there be a, a there's no legal issue with regard to um, allowing uh, renters to um, opt out of this collection if the owner of the building wants it? I don't believe so. Maybe there's a witness who thinks so. I don't so I don't think I heard testimony as to that issue. It, so, so you're asking if, 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 if a I mean, I'll ask the policy reason why the tenant can, um, you know, opt out of this if the owner of the building would like to understand what their building uh, uh, is. I'd like to find out why the why the why we're allowing the tenant to opt out of it. And I, 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 I wanted to understand why. I thought, why I thought there was an option. There is. There That's is. what I'm saying. I'm wondering why. Oh, oh, you didn't want to opt out. I just, if the owner wants to know what their business, what their building is, I think it's their prerogative, I suspect, to, to do that. But I, I was, so I was asking Luke if there was a leak, if well, if he thought there might be a legal reason uh, I, I why don't, that shouldn't be, why that. I don't think there's a legal reason. And, and I'll ask some the policy reason. Uh, Section 13 is continuation of existing working groups that are established, but my understanding is they have not met recently. So this is simply the same. Those groups continue these new, two new working groups. Um, then there's reporting requirements, and uh, some individuals have asked. Um, <coughs> Perhaps these requirements lack any mandate for the residential working group to come back and give information. That may be so. But of course, as a standing committee, if this becomes law, you could invite working groups to come in and tell you what they're doing and give you an update. And you can ask for them to give you information or recommendations if you so wish. Um, effective dates. So one thing I want to point out is C, and this is the sunset. So we ran through. The working group language that expires on June 30th, 2021, which means those groups would cease to function, cease to exist at that point. It's a sunset. I know that's been very quick. I'm well, I'll be here. I'm welcome to sit down and answer questions after other witnesses have had a chance to ask. Any questions at this point? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Abby, I know that you are on a very tight schedule and, and maybe one to speak to this bill. I don't know if there's anything, I'm, I'm not compelling you to, to sit down, but um, I understand that you've got to be someplace else at 9.30, sure. and since there's a lot of efficiency Vermont uh, in this bill, I'd, I'd be happy um, to have you say a few words if you want to. There's nothing additional that I feel like I need to say. Okay. I'm here to answer questions if you all have questions on the efficiency Vermont portion, but I provided testimony last week. Yeah. Nothing has changed in my view since that time. Great. Thanks. Senator Frey. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, I didn't I invited Senator Bray uh, primarily because the um, sections in the bill, uh, or at least some of the sections in the bill that were added since we spoke with Luke last week about this um, were things that your committee had considered and um, you had provided an amendment for on the floor. And I think that's um, uh, sections 11, 12, 13, 14. And so because your committee had done some work on this, I wanted to give you a chance to um, speak to some of these additions. And sure. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Um, good morning. So for the record, uh, Senator Chris Bray from that South County. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about it. I've flipped back to uh, finding seven, which Rick Pan pointed out. And because, in a way, although findings aren't legally uh, binding in some way, it does, uh, in one place, capture what we were trying to assemble in the bill, which was namely um, a weatherization program uh, plus an energy reading program. And uh, so, although things got, as it moved from S-171 into H-63 down to finance, over to probes, off the floor, um, things sort of got taken apart, put back together again. But in essence, the, the bill as you see it, I think, reflects the committee's underlying intent, which was 
uh, find a way to weatherize it uh, for low income, more low income weatherization, make sure that we could do more moderate income weatherization. Uh, that was addressing the need that probably many of us have heard that where you hear folks saying, uh, I'm all for low income weatherization, I'm over the threshold to qualify for assistance, I'm not looking for a full grant, but I wish were more available or more readily available was money to help me do my moderate income projects. So the goal was to bring up both uh, moderate and low income weatherization. The pieces that um, Mr. Martland just went through on the energy rating uh, work, uh, the reason we thought it was important enough to bring it back to the bill and back to the floor was that we talk often about um, fiduciary responsibility, knowing that we're spending taxpayer dollars well, or any dollars that we control, whether they're efficiency or amount dollars or taxpayer dollars. And um, so, you know, how do we do that? We, we do things like results-based accountability. We're trying to measure performance. Uh, one of the things that I think a lot of energy work has been, on the weatherization side, has been hamstrung by is lack of uh, an agreed upon, widely accepted, visible, transparent energy rating system that just like um, you know the MPG sticker in a car. So let's say you buy a car, you can look at mileage. You buy an appliance, you can look at energy use. Now you're about to make the largest investment uh, of your life probably in a home or building. And although you can get data from a seller's property information report once you're in the buying process, there's not um, it's not necessarily consistent, and it's, it doesn't use any single accepted underlying standard. So everyone could say you basically have the MPG equivalent on energy. So um, the marketplace, uh, in, in our estimation, suffers a little when you have a lack of information and transparency. And for instance, in uh, my own case, uh, it was made very clear when we got a very thorough energy audit, uh, and we have we were putting our house in the market. We did the walkthrough with us. We showed the energy report. She said, well, I wouldn't bother to make any of those investments because you won't recover them in the marketplace. And um, we did some because it made the house more comfortable while we were there. We just felt like it was a good idea, the right thing to do for, for us at that point. But it was, uh, it epitomized for me the, the missing, we haven't really uh, set up a market that has appraisers, banks, uh, and, the, uh, and the private marketplace, I'd say, fully understanding and valuing energy efficiency work. And ultimately, if you can't put a figure on something, it tends not to get valued. So this is trying to bring some quantitative rigor to, to that marketplace. The efficiency of capitalism is supposed to be driven by uh, perfect knowledge on both sides. Buyers don't spend too much, sellers don't sell for too little. That level of perfect knowledge is, there's an inefficiency when one side knows more than the other. And we're trying to make it more transparent and even. Not only is to the advantage of anyone on either side of a transaction, it's just better for information for both parties. Um, Senator, the in number seven, Yep. You, you delineate three approaches, um, and all are, uh, you say you will do this. And the, the second two are included in this amendment. The third, the first one, yep. the will establish a statewide voluntary program for rating. I, I understand the intent is to work toward that, right. but I um, wonder if the word will is problematic in this in this case. Uh, because the bill doesn't do that. Yes. Well, I, uh, yeah, I, I suppose you could say that, uh, that, I don't know, legally, counsel could tell you whether or not, given that it's in a finding, I don't know if that merits changing some. If we were a month away from adjournment, and right. we're going to do a lot of uh, editing. And, and I'm, that might be very suitable. Ed. And I'm not raising these as objections, just as yeah. concerns that other people may raise. Sure. Um, it sets us. It puts us in a position to be able to come back and look at it in the future. But, uh, you 
and the other thing that goes along with it is voluntary. So you, uh, Representative Sherman asked about the disclosure piece. We've ended up trying to uh, walk a, a balanced line. I didn't ask about the disclosure piece. But uh, disclosure of energy use by tenants. Tenant. Oh, by tenants, yes. By tenants. I'm sorry. No. Um, well, not their disclosure. <laughs> well, right. Whether their, their information is disclosed. Right. Right. At the request of the owner of the, the unit. Of the right. That's yes. correct. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so that is, I think, sort of another example of where there was a sensitivity around the fact that some people say, well, my energy usage is private information. I don't want my uh, landlord to know what it is, <coughs> period. And so we're trying to create a mechanism that would allow, you know, we all know people who are very uh, privacy oriented. And so we wanted to honor that. Uh, that uh, someone who would say, I don't want my information released, period. I have nothing to hide. I'm not interested in being released. So th that's why that provision is in there. But the goal of it was to create a mechanism so that a landlord uh, who was working with tenants who were willing to do this could then get energy figures for your entire property and then assess whether or not an energy investment, energy efficiency investment was merited. Can you upgrade apartments? And would that be a cost-effective investment for the owner? So we're trying to get that information onto the table. Mark? Senator, I guess I would ask the question, so there's a new working group, Building Energy Working Group, where there was an existing one that sounds like it has a map. Why, why create another group? So it's, um, thank you. Uh, the, whole, the idea basically is just to re, uh, reconvene a uh, working group that has lapsed. The, the membership is significantly the same. Um, frankly, we've run into headwinds in terms of bringing some of their recommendations forward and, and building policy and programs on them. You know, like the whole, just this question we've just been discussing, like disclosure or not disclosure. So there is, uh, it's, the group has worked in the past, we'd like to ask them to help us figure this out as we move forward. In part, if I look at it, if we're doing roughly 50% more work on the low and moderate income sides, we're talking about the investment of $17 million or so next year. Um, we said, okay, it's about time that we try to help ourselves have uh, a clearer uh, understanding of energy performance ramifications of doing that work. Can, can I just follow up on that? I, um, Senator, I just, um, the name, uh, and this, uh, the name of the committees are different. Is that not correct? Yeah, the working groups? One is commercial and one is residential. No, from the prior working group. Um, aren't they, aren't they now labeling? Build residential building energy labeling working group. Was, in, right. was labeling not there before? Is that correct? I think that is correct. I'd have to go back and check. I'm pretty sure that's, that's correct. Okay. So this Actually, is so about I'm confused labeling. by that. I, so in section 13, maybe I'm just reading this wrong. In section 13 of the bill A, it says the residential energy labeling working group. Mm -hmm. um, and commercial. Be, so those are the current names? Those are the previous names. Okay. The, no, those are the current. Those are the. Those are the names under this new proposed. Right. And you're saying that the old names didn't include the word label. That's correct. Yeah. They were the residential <laughs> energy working group. Gosh, I think. The, I, I think. I think I did. I was on the commercial. I don't group. think so. I, don't, I, don't think, I, I feel like it's a. It, the uh, name was something like energy labeling and benchmarking or something like that. Mm -hmm. Should be to the two. Building energy working groups. I'm not sure I understand the reason of the question. Could, could Luke tell us what the names of the? I think the way this is going is section 13, which might answer your question. If you go down to section 13, there. Yep, keep going, please. There's still section 12. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. section right there so this is the language that continues the existing 
groups and folds them into the new groups. I believe those names are accurate, but um, I have to go back and recheck. I think I'd like to confirm that. <coughs> if there were um, a mistake in, in the naming of the groups, that could be done as a technical correction on the floor, right? Well, I believe your that your body decides whether to concur, concur with for the <coughs> amendment, not concur, request a committee of conference, see various options. But if you're concurring, I don't think you can change the language. Mark. Senator, another question I got in it that's you know it maybe shouldn't be related right now, but I know through uh, Act 250 changes, there was a proposal to look at any new project having the net zero carbon emissions. Would would either one of these groups be involved in uh, drafting up guidelines around such a policy? Or I don't think so. Well, what, two things. One, I'm not aware of that provision or party to that discussion. I know that all the Act 250 work is really going on in the House side this session, so uh, I don't know other than hearing about as little as you just said about it, that's all I've heard. Okay. So I, I, just, sorry, just I can't say more about that. Um, no, the, uh, this, this group is really uh, oriented to uh, looking at um, trying to have, well, I'll go back to the MPG sticker, you know, something like, to have an energy rating system that uses an agreed upon standard so that people will be able to do apples to apples comparisons. And you know, we as policymakers will be able to say, We've invested $17 million in 10 years. We've changed units. We can do some before and after measuring and say, um, here's what it looks like, and here's how we'd be able to communicate it with uh, buyers and sellers. There's I just want to make sure I understand your question. <laughs> I, I didn't understand your question. Um, whether well, these th these groups would get involved with. Uh, it was under Act 250, there's yep. a proposal to any new uh, buildings that are built meet a net zero carbon emissions. Okay. So there's got to be some guidelines around what does that yep. mean as yep. far as energy efficiency for that building. Got it. Right. There, sorry, now I'm thinking a little more as you say. So there is a, a net zero, uh, you know, there's a like passive house certification, lead, you know, silver, platinum, et cetera. So there are other certifications already. I think if someone was going as far as at zero, which is, so this doesn't say that we're going to go out and change the energy efficiency of everybody's home. It just says, as we're doing this work, do we have a metric we can rely that we've all evaluated and agreed we can rely on that will be you know, neutral information for lawmakers, program people operating programs to use. Just, yeah, just to follow up a little bit, I guess. I guess my concern there, and you mentioned it a little bit about even, I think, your situation. I would be concerned about with, with so much else that's uh, looked at when somebody's trying to sell their home. Mm -hmm. um, would this be another avenue for uh, an individual looking at a property to have this evaluation and say, geez, you know, that's, that's not something I want to purchase until you do this, 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 and this? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's already with the building inspections. There's things around, you know, ground fault breakers not being in. I mean, you know, the, a lot of times now the folks that are looking to purchase go down this list and say, "Geez, you know, we've got all these things. We're not purchasing this until you do you I'm, fix them." Yeah, and I'm, I'm smiling worried. because we're we're going through this. Finally, our, our farm did sell, so we we had you know the home inspection, home inspection report. And uh, frankly, we had some negotiation back and forth on what things we would take care of and what things would become the new property owners. I mean, I, you know, to me, uh, the, even though that report has financial impacts on both parties in our transaction, it, it seemed preferable to me to have us get a clearer, more accurate picture of what's really going on in that house. And then we, you know, we did our normal back and forth. So. It, it didn't turn out to be a problem. I know that some people worry about uh, anything that discloses information that could lead to one party hesitating in some way. But frankly, I feel like you know, that back to that power of capitalism, you don't overpay, someone doesn't uh, uh, sell at too low a price. And it's based on good information going back and forth between the parties. So, 
Mike and then Heidi and Scott. Okay, so um, the data that these uh, working groups are going to collect, that's going to be aggreg aggregated? So, so on the residential side or? <coughs> well, on the residential or the uh, commercial side. What I'm, at, what I'm uh, wondering is, will the data be such that you can assign a value to a particular building if someone were to look at that, that rating? And, or whether it will be um, you know, essentially anonymous in terms of um, if I were going to buy or sell a house, whether that data would be able to say what the energy rating of that particular property is. So it's uh, uh, outlined here is creating a system that could you could use, but we don't have is the agreed upon standard. So it's voluntary, and uh, what we're trying to do is establish through the working group a standard. So if you did want to do that, um, you know, in our case, we can hand over to the buyer um, the energy audit we have, which is very thorough. But uh, there is already there have been information sheets developed, like a, a one pager. It said. I know, like, again, back in the MPG sticker, it gives you sort of the energy efficiency of that unit. You might uh, include information around average annual energy costs for keeping that place heated, et cetera. So, like so uh, <clears throat> it sounds like you're trying to develop a standard, but uh, before the standard is actually developed, would someone be able to use <clears throat> the data that's being collected to? to say, oh, you know, I'm buying this property at 393 Nature's Way in Charlotte, mm -hmm. and uh, what's the energy stand, what's the uh, energy rating on that? And uh, they go to this data or report, whatever, and find that. Well, so that's where we could end up with that. Right now, there's not a, there's not a standard that someone can refer to and say, hey, I'd like to know your HERS rating, you know, your whole energy risk system. Rating system <laughs> right. number. Yeah. So, um, Senator, I, I've, first of all, I'll, I, I will um, I appreciate that it is um, a, uh, a desire to get a voluntary instead of a mandatory, because I know a lot of people uh, would like mandatory labeling. Um, uh, I guess I will first ask, well, I am... Um, You, you, you talked about the, uh, the knowledge balance and that, you know, um, and that I, I understand that my concern um, is actually the seller, mm -hmm. is with the seller of a property who, um, you know, if you have means, um, that's great. You're doing all sorts of weatherization to your home sure. in most cases. If you don't have means, you're not, unless you are one of the lucky ones who get weatherization services or even want the weatherization services. Um, um, and that's who I'm talking about. Um, and even with a voluntary, when people go to this and they notice there might not be a weather uh, a rating, but it will incur, you know, it will uh, develop into something that um, my worry is that you are going to um, cause the home that would have sold for three hundred thousand dollars to sell for two hundred thousand um, dollars, and um, and that person without means um, is stuck with now with a two hundred thousand dollar house and a uh, hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage, um, whatever that, and and that's that's where my concern is is with those um, those homes uh, that are. Um, owned by Vermonters who don't have the means, like a lot of us in this room do, uh, to weatherize our homes, um, and we're and we're um, and we're making those properties functionally obsolete in the in the market in the housing market, and um, and um, I'm really concerned about that. I know there is all sorts of desire to make sure that we um, that we. Uh, do what we can to ensure um, energy efficiency, carbon emission reduction, and I'm all for that. But to do it at the expense of, um, of Vermonters um, without means um, is, is, in my view, a, a problem. And so I'm concerned about this. I know it's just a working group. 
I will also, though, now that I have the, I'll also ask about the commercial. I will say this, I'd like to add something in there that says in their report there should be um, information um, collected and gathered and investigated about the possible ramifications of, um, of the sale of homes and the bot and the bot with regard to the um, ramifications on Vermonters who are selling and buying homes um, and also um, ramifications on the market itself in the industry. And I would like to see that in this as far as the report is concerned. I'd also like to see um, somebody, uh, a member of the real estate uh, community industry on the commercial um, working group. There are um, commercial real estate agents are a necessary part of that um, working group. And so I, I would like to see those. Um, I will probably have an amendment to do that, and if possible, hopefully. And that, so. The flip side of that argument, though, is that what about the consumer? Shouldn't the consumer be able to, to know, you know, how much the energy costs are going to be? Uh, and they do. House? And and if you if you um, if you know the real estate market, realtors um, are they um, they give all of this the the energy, um, what the costs have been, everything else. They also have an agreement with Efficiency Vermont, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> they developed all these materials about um, so that they give to the buyers what exactly is out there for, for, for resources from the state and uh, private entities and what have you. Um, the information is there for all the buyers. It's just not a label. It's not a, it's not a scarlet A on your house. It's not so a Nazarene I'll, symbol yeah, on I'll, your I'll, house. I'll, I'll, I'll just say, it, um, I, I don't, just from responding to your Concerns, Heidi, that, that, that the uh, energy use in, in, in buildings um, doesn't really have any value, or very little value, in the marketplace right now. And it would be amazing if, uh, if, if by having a label, uh, a miles per gallon rating, or a, a, one of those things you see on washing machines and refrigerators, an energy usage rating, an energy label, um, if that if that required. Hundred thousand dollars worth of value in the market that would be amazing. I, I just, I just can't imagine. It. I would, I would urge you to talk to some realtors because I've, I, I know a bunch of them who are concerned about this and the market. Well, itself, I, so. I, 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 it also took a long time for for uh, the MLS uh, uh, system to even have a box to put in uh, your your energy usage, your how much your energy mm -hmm. cost last year. Um, anyway, um, so I guess, I guess I'm. I don't feel like that's, that is, is, is going to be an issue. I do agree that a realtor ought to be on the commercial group, especially. Um, I think that would be really useful. And, and I, I was on the commercial group. I, I, was talking, I don't know if you were here when I was talking about that. Uh, and we did try to get realtors involved. And, and, uh, and there were a few who did participate in some of the meetings. I think it's very important. Um, I also wanted to respond to your uh, comment about whether um, uh, an energy label would then would then require a seller to make repairs or something uh, before they were able to sell the house and and I think the difference between uh, between items identified in the home inspection and and a, and a label is that items identified in the home inspection is sort of a discrete list of things you know fix this faucet fix that whatever um, and whereas a, a, an energy label is is is, is much more. Just this. This is how this building operates the way it is now, um, and it, does it make a difference in in the, in the market? Well, you know, it's 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 a factor. You know, do, do people consider when they are buying a vehicle that this truck gets 18 miles a gallon and that car gets 35 miles a gallon? I mean, some people take that's that's the deciding factor. Other people, they decide that they they need this. This, the, the functionality of, the, of, a, of a pickup truck, so they're willing to pay that price. So, you know, it's it's a factor in the, in in the decision, but I don't think it, it, it is the deciding factor for most people. It's, it's it's what it's what they need in in, in a vehicle, and I think the same would, would apply in a in a house. You're really buying you know, what they say in real estate, right? Right? Is you're not buying a house, you're buying a piece of a neighborhood. So, um, you can always fix the house, you can't fix the neighborhood. So anyway, that's. I, I think I think I think your concerns are um, speaking to Heidi now. Are 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 more um, 
I don't think they're, they're, they're really going to be a, um, an issue in the, in the reality. And, and I appreciate that. I would just say that, um, that I, I uh, people who have been in the real estate industry for many, many years mm -hmm. um, and have a lot of experience in um, yeah. home sales, home purchases, um, and, uh, and commercial real estate. I, um, I tend to um, defer to them when it comes to what might make a difference um, on, in the real estate okay. market. So, okay, so friends in real estate business also. Yeah. So, so Robin and Ted, um, I'd just like to know that we have Vermont Association of Realtors in the room and we can make sure to get, give, them, give yeah. them a couple of minutes. Sure, when we're done with questions for Senator Bray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. just trying to uh, make people aware of the, the time limit. Yeah. Yeah. Time constraints. If, if, if it turns out that it, uh, homes are worth 30% you know, less with a bad energy rating, how does that impact property taxes, town assessments, et cetera, um, you know, cascade effect? It Question would. for the room at large. <laughs> <laughs> it would. Sure, I mean, but if, if your house is assessed at uh, 250000 instead of 300000 Well, maybe over a long period of time, if yeah. through those equalization studies yeah. it showed that, oh, but then as a lister, I've got to start going in and looking at these energy audits and say, geez, you don't have, you know, triple glazed windows, check, you yeah. don't have. You see, that, you see it, won't be, it won't be that level of detail. It would be basically a number. But we don't know that. This is the study group is going to come up with the recommendation. Right. <laughs> I can tell you, well, I mean, the point. The point is, the point is to come up with something simple that can be that can be compared house to house, building to building. Like very specifically, what this bill does is it has a working group, two working two groups, groups that are advising uh, the commissioner um, at the department to come up with a recommendation to the legislature in 2021. So. These working groups serve in an advisory capacity to the Department of Public Service. It's essentially what's happening here. Right. And it's the commissioner that comes up with the recommendation to the legislature. So on this, I think, you know, the thing I always think when we worry about, I, I understand that the, the biggest asset most people already have is going to be their right. home. So yeah. poor people are very sensitive about the value of how uh, it's saleability, et cetera. Um, but because we have a working group program, that's a chair's recommendations to the department, I'm sure this le this legislature will be talking to that department, and there'll be plenty of discussions about what has been learned and how to move forward in a way that's productive. Um, but I think I always come down on the side of more transparency and more information is uh, just a healthier place for everyone to operate from, and uh, it will guide decision making going forward. Sorry, having pled for brevity. The reports, requires a report from the commercial group. I don't see a requirement for a report from the residential working group. Is that something that we'd be looking to add in later on? Um, I'm just start scrolling around. Uh, I think the intent was to hear from both, so. Yeah, I'm not sure that it's exactly correct. Hmm. Um, section 14. Yeah, I'm reading. Yep, thank you. <coughs> hmm. Thanks for the auto assist. <laughs> <laughs> Your L car trained eye. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, the only thing I would say as an addendum to that is in B of that section it says that the commissioner shall file the report and recommendations created under subsection A, which includes both um, working groups. That doesn't mean that a, a report is required, certainly, but um, it does prefer the recommendations created under. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess subsection A is, is just this section. Yeah. It's not. It's not section thirteen mm -hmm. or uh, section twelve. Very important. Hmm. Good catch. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good luck. Good to you. See you. Yeah. Thank you. Did you want to join us, Nancy? Thank you for being here.
For the record, my name is Nancy Lynch. I am the Government Affairs Director for the Vermont Association of Realtors. And I would like to thank um, the Chairman and also all of the committee members for allowing me to pro uh, provide a very brief testimony today. And in speaking with the Chair, I explained that I was going to go briefly into a little bit of context because there's some confusion about VAR's position. And I would like to make sure that I leave this room today with a very um, clear um, uh, message as to exactly where we stand and why we stand there. So um, while I do not normally do this, in the interest of time, I'm just going to read this. You all have electronic copies. And I also um, will pass out a hard copy for people um, about one of the things that is handed out to um, buyers during the process. So <clears throat> as I said, I'm just going to try to go through this as quickly as possible and hit the most salient points. Um, the Vermont Association of Realtors, we have worked very well with representatives in the energy conservation world, most notably Efficiency Vermont, for several years. Our goal has always been to work in partnership with them and others to make Vermont a great place to work and to live and to balance the natural tensions that sometimes exist between energy efficiency goals and the reality of Vermont's aging housing stock. It's one of the reasons why we have spearheaded the first Green Housing Symposium starting in 2015 and this fall we will be holding our third one. This symposium brings together stakeholders from all over to address this very issue and discuss also the emerging trends in the industry. <coughs> it was in this vein that in March, our CEO testified in front of Senate Natural Resources that we would support the working groups with the caveat that a commercial realtor be added to the commercial working group at that time. We were very much trying to be partners with Efficiency Vermont and play um, nicely in the sandbox. Um, and so we supported the working groups at that point. This is when the bill was still S-171. During Ms. Hussey's verbal testimony, she stated firmly to Senator Bray when asked that VAR would never support mandated labeling as it would clearly put older, older homes at a disadvantage in the marketplace, as has been referenced by Representative Sherman. It is true that in her written testimony, because of our efforts to be good partners, Ms. Hosley did ask for a postponement of any considerations of mandatory labeling, but in no way did we indicate any support thereof. In May, when the bill we originally testified on was swept into H-63, I testified in front of Senate Finance Committee on the newer version of H-63. At that time, I did not submit written testimony, but I did send along the testimony from Helen Hosley that had been submitted to Senate Natural, mostly so the Senate Finance Committee could see the pamphlets that were made in concert with Efficiency Vermont that are all sits in front of you now. These pamphlets are handed out by realtors at the time of the signing of the purchase and sales agreement. I also pointed out in committee that there are three occasions, at the minimum, in which case the prospective buyers are given factual information about the home that they are considering. First, in working with Efficiency Vermont and the New England Real Estate, New England Real Estate Network, we did add the green fields to the MLS listing forms where sellers can put any information regarding energy efficiencies and upgrade, not just the windows and the normal stuff, but the more advanced technologies that people coming into the market looking for that may be seeking. And that way, they can make sure that they pick out the right homes to show those particular potential buyers. I would like to note that we are also the first um, state in the country to do so. So if a buyer comes to a realtor seeking an older home with upgraded efficiencies, again, they can find that home by looking in those green fields and, and show them those particular homes. Secondly, at the seller disclosure, they include all of the actual costs, not estimated, but actual, associated with the running of the home. So prospective buyers have a true cost to consider when making their home buying decision. Third, when the purchase and sales contract is signed, the buyer is provided with the pamphlet sitting in front of you, which explains all of the available information on where and how they can improve the energy efficiency of their home. They also check a box affirming that they have been giving this information and understand it. This is our effort to be completely transparent. 
to suggest that this is not accurate and honest information, I take a slight affront at because realtors do have to pass a code of ethics and they pass that information along to their sellers. The information that sellers are providing to buyers is transparent, honest, and factual. I indicated in my testimony in Senate Finance that we did not see the need for the committees since it is my understanding that one, they do not meet on a regular basis, two, they still seem to have more unanswered questions than suggestions, which if you read the bill states they must come back with their report answering these unanswered questions that they've never been able to answer before. And our partnerships with groups like Efficiency Vermont are strong with both groups taking a balanced approach to this issue. However, I did ask that if those committees were to be revitalized, that they not only needed to meet regularly and do the work assigned to them, but that a commercial realtor, again, be added to the commercial working group. When the committee voted, Senate Finance voted 5-1-1 to strike sections one through five, which included these working groups, from the bill, removing the committees from VAR, from the bill. VAR was firmly in support of that move. That is what brings me here today. We support expanded weatherization programs for moderate income homeowners and buyers since 80% of our housing stock, can we think about that? 80% of our housing stock is more than 40 years old. And new homeowners are not in a position to put out that additional money to weatherize the home and often cannot do so for many years, if at all. So I'm very happy to see that they are in, in, increasing those loans or grants for moderate income um, potential homeowners. We support the version of H63 that passed out of Senate Finance 511 with no working groups and an increase to the weatherization program to the Vermonters who meet at that time it was 80 to 140 percent of median income. Finally, if you insist, and I know that's a strong word so I apologize, but if you move forward with creating working committees, we ask that included in those recommendations that come out of the group, you add into the bill language requiring an in-depth analysis of the recommendations that would have on our already tight housing market and the economic and financial implications that their final recommendations would place on Vermont's current homeowners and prospective buyers. And again, as has already been said, clearly we would request if you do um, add the working groups and keep it in this version of the bill that obviously the residential working group needs to come back with a report as well. Um, and I will just close by saying I really feel that um, we are on top of the emerging trends with our national organization. Um, states are dealing with this all over the country. We are already working with energy efficiency groups. We are on the right track. And I do not see the need to put together working groups that may or may not, quite frankly, meet on a regular basis and come back to you next January with recommendations. If you would allow us to continue to do our work, we have our Green Symposium for the third time coming up in the fall. We continue to work with Abby and also Efficiency Vermont, and I think we can achieve the same, if not better, quite frankly, outcomes, balancing both the tight housing market and the economic situation that Vermonters are in, and also the need to be very uh, mindful of uh, energy efficiency in the future. Thank you very much. So I don't want to parse your words, Nancy. I just want to be very clear on, yes. on what you're advocating for. Um, and and I did look back and read um, Helen Hosley. Is it Hosley yes. or Hosley? It's Hosley. Hosley um, uh, testimony. And um, you know she's very clear from her testimony, and you probably continued this as well and did this morning about the support for weatherization programs. Um, she also says she supports forming uh, the two working groups, but as you said, wanted to make sure that there was a member of the real estate community that was part of the commercial group. Yes. Um, and then also further says that um, 
she had concerns about these working groups mandating anything. Um, Correct. She says in her, uh, in her written testimony, we ask that you postpone mandating anything at this point and allow the working groups made up of experts to tackle the unresolved issues, et cetera. Yes. So, Again, I want to be careful about parsing your words, and you nope. know, the advantage we have of you here is um, you can correct any mistakes from what I heard. The focus sounds to be that uh, Vermont realtors, uh, that you're bringing to us, is that you want to make sure Vermont realtors have representation on the commercial uh, 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 working group that is laid out in this bill. Um, and my reading of this bill is that. Uh, and going back to the finding section, um, which we don't want to put too much weight on, but um, is to establish a statewide voluntary program, <clears throat> which you've also been very clear that realtors have been working along that line, providing information to uh, prospective buyers of properties through something that it sounds like realtors have come together around. Absolutely, yeah. along with the energy groups, yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And, and I would just, if I may, just add one last yeah, thing. Please. Um, something that Representative Sherman um, mentioned that, you know, has been discussed amongst our realtors, and that is the fact that a mandated label up there is like a scarlet letter. Somebody is not even going to want to look at a home that is rated D, and that, in, in many cases, and that alone could preclude them from looking at a home that they can afford and then being given the information that will be out there to help them further weatherize it. Yeah. So you, so with 80% of our homes not being up to what energy efficiency uh, standards most people would like to see, if the first thing they see is a, is a C or a D, who wants that? We all want A's and B's. We're cutting that out. If we were living in a place where so much of our housing stock was brand new and LEED certified and energy efficient, we would not necessarily be sitting here today asking you to think about letting the parties that are already working together work together so we can avoid that very thing. That is what we're afraid of. Not that we want to discourage um, homeowners and potential buyers from improving their homes from an energy standard perspective, but we don't want to scare them away before they even have a chance to look at the very little housing stock that's available. Yeah. I'll leave you with one last example. A realtor in Washington County had a potential buyer come to her. She had three homes that she could show in that person's price range of $250,000. Three homes. So I'm leaving you with that because that is a very real situation for the, for the majority of realtors in this state. Taking aside Chittenden County, the Northeast Kingdom and all of Southern Vermont, they're dying. Those houses are sitting for months and months and months. So we are just trying to balance the importance and recognize that with the reality of what we're dealing with in housing. Mm -hmm. People buy fixer uppers all the time. They and do. I've, I've done that. Absolutely. <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> a piece of that. I guess I'm. Being the weatherization. The absolutely. Where they have only accurate information on. And I guess our and that's what that's what we're afraid of. We're afraid that they're going to see that that grade and they won't even look at the home and find out about what's available to them, representative. That that's our concern. So okay, we don't use grades anymore either. We can do proficiency based. Yeah, okay. whatever it is. Nobody wants to start with distinction. Letter. With distinction. So I thank you so very promise. much for allowing me to yeah, no. clarify the confusion yeah, yeah. of where we really stand. Yeah, yeah. But it, it had a lot to do with the um, many moving pieces and numbers of this bill. Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Have Appreciate a great day. Thank you. Thanks, so I imagine we're meeting again. This, yeah. Um, well, clearly, Heidi, you, you've uh, uh, you know, voice some concerns. I, I don't know if anyone else wants to speak, just you know, generally uh, to, to the bill. But, uh, and I welcome uh, you speaking as well. Well, so Robin caught something that I think is really important. If they're going to do this, we want to have a report. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I'm wondering if, <coughs> with regard to timing, I understand all of the other stuff in this bill, and but with regard to timing, I'm wondering if we could. Um, further, you know, concur with the Senate proposal of amendment with further proposal of amendment and add 
the report, add a commercial realtor on the, on the, on the I mean, a, a realtor on yeah. the commercial thing. And, and my hope would be to add something that says, you know, possible ramifications to the housing market and buyers and sellers, Vermont buyers and sellers. So to the reports. Yeah, to, to, to your to your larger point, I would just from a process standpoint, make sure we're all on the same page. Which is, in my opinion, this is a bill that has to pass. Uh, this in the next twenty, you know, thirty six hours. And the reason it has to pass is because there's funding in here for weatherization um, that uh, the Senate put in in lieu of a you know two cent increase in a home fuels tax, and that's I think section one of the bill. Um, the Sheets portion of the bill, which is the bottle bill, which we haven't touched on at all, is essentially funding for uh, clean water. Um, so those are two really important things that are kind of pulling the train that's got a number of other things in here, which I would put in the category of essentially studies and ask for proceedings. Um, so uh, in no way am I going to support something that's going to preclude the passage of this bill in the next 36 hours. Um, you know, so short of that, I'm, I'm open open to discussion. <laughs> and and, and, and I, hear, I hear you, Mr. Chairman, so, but so from the a fact is they put this on the floor of the Senate. I hear. Um, and there are things that should be fixed, and we should uh, go to the Senate and say we're going to fix those. Uh, and I can, Mark and I can certainly go to our caucus about suspension of rules or anything so else. So that's an important point as well. I understand that, and uh, but I, we'd like to make sure that, um, I, I understand that, and yep. I can, we can do that if, I don't know, if Mark, okay. you know, so. But I still have concerns about this piece altogether. So, yep. I mean, I know this place as well as anybody, and you can say all you want about it and not being in mandate now, but yep. once it gets rolling, to me, that's the realtor's concerns and my concerns. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've heard from the Home Builders Association. They want to I hear you, this but, whole but the bill is going to pass anyway, so right. I would like to see if we can get a suspension of rules, if we can make the important changes to it. It's good. I mean, well, would that be taking this section out completely for them? No. It's not going I mean, it's not going to. They won't agree to that. I know they won't. It's not going to happen. <coughs> So, um, I'm not, I'm not least, saying I'm ready yet. Oh, yeah. So, so, so sorry. What, what I will tell you, uh, again, from a process point, is I'm happy to go uh, meet with the speaker and Representative Sheldon, um, who is the presenter of this bill, uh, on Representative Forguide's behalf, um, and you know, see if there's something that we can uh, get to on that. But at the end of the day, I have a goal, which we're going to achieve, which is that uh, this bill is going to get through in the next 36 hours. So, Well, and, and just to elaborate a little bit more, I mean, yeah. even if you or both of us talk to the caucus, I, I'm not saying that they'd be agreeable to suspension of rules. I, no, we I totally to understand. Talk. We just need to talk to them. Totally I'm, understand. I'm not, I'm not sure we're on the same page. So. OK, so there's different levels of conversation going on here. Before we leave this room, and I'm not going to look for a, a vote on, you know, concurrence or some of the things that Heidi would suggest. We can come back to that. Um, but uh, you know, is there anything else that Seth you'd like to? Yeah. The so the, the the thing was asking for a voluntary program that does, you know, gives a report, and we've got a voluntary program that gives a report. So does that mean it's already being met? And what the realtors are saying. Yeah, I, th I think yeah. what this is asking is the um, commissioner of the Department of Public Service to come back to the legislature in 18 months with recommendations slash report only on residential at this point. No, only on commercial. Only on commercial. commercial. Yeah. I beg your pardon. Excuse me. Um, you know, based on advice from these working groups. Um, so, well, it could wind up with something different than what's there. Scott, did you want to try something? Well, I think I, th I think that um, I agree with everything you said about we got to just have to get this across the line, and that these are um, these are working groups that are going to make a recommendation that the to, to the uh, report to the commissioner. The commissioner is going to make a recommendation. We're going to have another chance to talk about this. And uh, I, I guess in, in, in general, I think that uh, labeling um, is a, is is a, a a step forward, and and I think that voluntary labeling will be actually 
will, it, to the extent that it achieves currency in the marketplace and is, is something that people value, will be something that people want. Yeah. So I don't know if it will, that it will be necessary to be you know, that the mandatory is, 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 is probably ever going to happen. I just don't have a picture of that. Um, <coughs> so the uh, agreeing with, with the, the very real time constraints that we have and the, and the need to not derail the bill. Um, you know, Heidi, the, the concerns about the report and uh, the inclusion of, of the AR and the commercial group, I think, are, are real, but I also see as things that we can, the, the report we can amend next year. We can amend this January to include it, to require a report in the residential room, because they'd be working anyway. Um, and the commissioner appoints the members of the committee. Um, and under G, it says uh, other, another, other members with expertise in energy efficiency, building design, energy use, or the marketing and sale of real property. Sure. So and it's an option. It, it, it is, is option. It is. It's option. And yep. I, I agree. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not. But, well, it's, and I would also say it's, it's not precluded, but no, there is an option there, right. unlike the residential group where it is mandated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I would recommend, uh, Heidi, that you and Robin and I, uh, Robin is going to speak for the committee on the floor, just in kind of laying out um, how this is going to um, move forward on the floor at a point in time when we move forward with this, is uh, Representative Sheldon, it's her bill, um, is going to uh, introduce the bill, um, but then defer to other committees that have a piece of this, um, which is essentially our committee and appropriations. Um, and we're going to walk through the changes in the bill that um, uh, that have occurred since the bill last left the house. That's procedurally how we're going to go through the bill at a point in time when it comes up on the floor. Well, what, what does that mean at a point in time when it comes up on the floor? Do well, we that's time. What, I mean, no. What, what, what is I'm going to come up now? I mean, what, what I'm suggesting yeah. is that you and Robin and I, and actually pull uh, Representative Sheldon okay. um, aside to talk with uh, talk with the speaker. Um, about how we want to proceed here. Okay. Um, and I think some of that, frankly, will depend on the ability to get real suspension at the end of the day. So, um, so I, I, I'm guessing we are going to reconvene uh, at some point. 